Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. I am now back, but I still get the same question. Why do my photo prints still not match my monitor? It's all about color management. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back and if this is the first time you land on this channel it's because you are definitely interested in photo printing at home and if that is the case don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell so you don't miss anything I upload. I am back from Florida the trip went well I had a great time my nephews were there spent time with my sister did Magic Kingdom it was packed with people the whole southern hemisphere of the world was there because it is their summer now so what else do they have to do but to come up to Florida and play in Disney World? So anyway, my mom is doing okay. She's losing it a little bit, but you know, she's 92 and she's, um, uh, you know, maybe uh, totally blind now. And so still cognitive, very nice conversations we had. She just cannot walk. She had multiple strokes in the last couple of years so that's what brought her to this condition that she is now but anyway it all went well i'm going to be going back down possibly before the beginning of summer maybe by the end of the spring season it should be really nice down there and i gotta see her more often than i get a chance to do so that is it for now now let's tackle this subject color management i get so many questions and i put out so many videos and it seems that People just don't find them, maybe. I don't know what the problem is. But it's all about color management, folks, especially if you decide to start using third-party inks, and that's what everybody wants to do. Well, if you stick with just OEM inks and use their profiles, you should be able to get some very good results. Some of the complaints are that my black and whites have a tone. Greenish, warmish. You know what? It all boils down sometimes to when you use the driver by itself and you activate preview, that tends to throw off your image for some reason. That's very common on the Mac drivers. So anyway, I do not use any kind of previews. I make sure that I am using the proper color managed workflow. We'll get into that. So. Initially, remember, and I'll just very quickly tell you what you need to do. You get your new printer, you set it up, you run that. Oh, I don't have it here. That standard image, you know which one it is. By the way, for those of you who do not do Facebook, this baby is over 40 megabytes large, and I simply cannot email it to you. I'm sorry, but I cannot do that. And so unless you can probably use, I forget what it is, something box. You know what it is. Of course, I know what it is too, but I just can't remember right this minute. Sorry. Anyway, then maybe you can just download it from there directly. But most of you who are on Facebook and belong to my Facebook group should be able to obtain that file. You print it using the driver. Okay. What does that mean? That means that Photoshop and Lightroom and QImage and you know, um, whatever aperture, whatever you use to print is not managing color. You tell the driver to do so. So what do you do? You just pick, say, Canon Pro Luster if you're using a Canon printer. Quality high and 11 by 8.5 or 8.5 by 11 letter size or A4 or whatever you use in your part of the world. And you go ahead and you print it. The results should be a pretty darn good print. In other words, near perfect condition because that image is perfect to begin with. So it has not been tampered and you are not to tamper with it. So you just print it straight out of the computer. Okay. Then you look at it and you say, wow, this looks great. Now I know my printer is able to produce a perfect image by its lonesome self, especially this bad girl right here because you can do internal calibrations for papers. So you may not even need 
a what? An ICC profile. You may not. You may get beautiful results once you calibrate it to a certain paper, and you can do that with multiple papers. So anyway, so now you know that this printer can produce perfect images. So now you're going to go ahead and start working on your images. Uh-oh, here comes the unknown. Your images are not perfect like that standard or reference image I'm talking about. So now you load them up on your computer. By the way, did your print match your monitor? More than likely not because your monitor requires calibration. Think of it as if you had to send me your musical instrument out of the box, totally out of tune, and I tune it to a standard, not a standard by using my ears, but a standard by using some electronic device. Okay, once I get that instrument or flute or whatever, trumpet, with the uh, tuning slide set perfectly, and I do that to 10 trumpets, assuming they are all the same model, they should all perform the same. All of the notes should match by frequency pretty close. That's what the monitor calibration will do. It'll bring your monitor to a correct standard. The standard is not what is loaded on that monitor out of the box, believe me. It's going to be too bright, too contrasty, too, too saturated, and so on, and maybe non-linear at all. So you're going to get tonality changes from the darkest to the brightest. And you need to linearize that. And the only way to do that is with a calibrator. Uh-oh, that's an extra expense. Yes, when you get into this hobby craft job, you're going to have to invest some money. And that means investing in a monitor calibrator. And if you plan to make, wait a minute, let's not get into this yet, ICC profiles. You will have to get one type of calibrator that allows you to create paper, ink, and printer profiles. In other words, taking those three parameters into account to create a custom profile that will produce even better prints than the driver by itself, more accurate than the driver by itself. So that is what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start to provide you with this service. And I began today. I promise you that when I got back, I was going to start experimenting with my new equipment. And I went ahead and printed out a set of three sheets, each containing, I don't know how many patches, but total is 1,600 patches. 1,300 is probably more than enough. Some people even just print 600 something patches. Well, this is a 1,600 patch set. Once this is dried, it can be scanned. And how do I go about to print this? Well, I'm gonna do a video showing you step-by-step step how to do it on a Canon printer and an Epson printer. But basically, let me tell you, the best tool to use is QImage because QImage can be set to not manage color whatsoever. And then you just turn off color management in the printer. Max with Photoshop cannot do that. You need a special tool to print through Photoshop in order to be able to print a non-color management file. So anyway, that's why I love to use QImage. I have set some uh, presets for each one of my printers that I'm going to be producing profiles for because these printers will be using Precision Colors inks. And I want to create profiles for those papers that are not going to be covered in their line of free ICC profiles that they provide. All right, so you produce this by yourself at home. You will turn off color management. If you're using Photoshop and you're on a PC computer, you will turn off color management in the driver or color matching in Canon in color management in Epson. You will load this three set image and not size it, print it on 11 by eight and a half paper, A4 or letter size for US people and print it, let it dry for a 24 hour period. You will interleave some paper between, you know, regular copy paper between each print to protect it, pack it in a padded envelope and mail it to me. And I will go ahead and scan it and produce a profile for you. Now, if you send me an extra couple of sheets of that paper you used, to produce these charts, I will then do this for you. I will print a reference black and white 
or neutral file and a reference color file. These are my two reference files. I want to see if I can get this without any reflections. You can see that it is perfectly neutral. The rendition is awesome. This is a Pro 100 with PC, second generation ink set. They're going to be putting out another one by mid, maybe mid spring, I hope. But it produced a gorgeous result. Gorgeous. Better than my Color Monkey, by the way. Slightly better. I'm going to be doing a 3D comparison between the two profiles and see whether this one has a larger volume and includes more or the outer areas of the gamut bubble. So, okay, so it can do a great job with the regular color reference image. It can do a great job with the regular black and white reference image. So it should do a great job with everything I throw at it, right? Yeah, well, maybe not. And I'll tell you why. If my monitor is not calibrated, then remember these images are not touched at all. They are printed straight. But if my monitor requires calibration, then I'm going to go ahead and load my image and I'm going to play around with the edits and I'm going to maybe introduce a bias. Meaning if my monitor is too bright, I'm going to probably darken it a little bit. If my monitor is too contrasty, I'm going to probably remove the contrast a little bit. If I have a slight color cast, I'm going to adjust for that. Well, what I'm doing is introducing a bias on what possibly was a good image to begin with, only because my monitor is off. So I have to calibrate it. You must do that. You must do that because you have to bring your monitor to a standard. That way what you edit on it, it makes sense. Otherwise, you're editing on something that is not correct to begin with. You get what I mean. It's just not going to work. A thermometer has to be accurate. Otherwise, it means nothing. So you go ahead and you calibrate your monitor. Make sure that the luminance is brought down to a level that matches the luminance of paper under the same illumination color temperature that you're going to set your monitor to. Wow, that was long faluted. Okay, that was too long. But you get what I mean. Paper is very low reflectance. A monitor is highly reflective. I mean, it's just transmitted light shooting through it. Everything looks super bright. You need to you need to tone it down, okay, so that it kind of matches the reflectance level of paper, which is going to be a lot duller than a monitor is able to display an image due to the backlighting. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of prints that I made as a result of that. So I have a black and white here of a gentleman. I found this on the internet. None of these images are mine, but you can see how gorgeous that is. Beautiful contrast, just lovely. Does it match my monitor? It certainly does, it certainly does. So if I make a minute edit on my monitor, it will reflect on the print. If your print requires an adjustment on the monitor, when you thought it looked perfect to begin with, then your monitor needs calibration. Simple as that. You should not have to go back and compensate for some error that you see on your print when it looked okay on your monitor to begin with. That means the two do not match. Simply that means that the monitor is not calibrated to match the output that this printer, that printer, that printer can produce on a standard image. That is your standard. You always use a baseline standard. So here is a picture of a little girl that was probably about ready to uh, start practicing her ballet. And she is so tired. She's literally leaning against the uh, TV, almost asleep. Look at the skin tones, okay? People complain about skin tones looking bad. Let me go back to the reference image. And I'll have to get really close to you in order for you to see this. But take a look at the babies right here. All of those little girls. Those skin tones look perfect. They are not too red. They are not too magenta. They look like skin tones. If you are the type of photographer that specializes in portraiture, in people pictures, whether they are neutral black and white or toned or full color, you need to have an accurate working system so that you can produce skin tones that are perfect. If that is your standard, if that is your golden skin tones, then you need to 
get your your workflow nailed down if landscapes is your is your thing that gives you a lot more latitude because you can literally adjust constant you know contrast and and in saturation and you can play around with the look you can you know artistic license takes over but for portraiture you need to have that nailed down so that the skin tones are perfect and here's a little hint for you do not use perceptual intent okay that will that will harm your skin tones use well the other one the the name escapes me right now this is the condition that i am in right at the moment um it'll come to me but anyway let me show you quickly here before we put you to sleep some 13 by 19 shots that i just did on the pro 100 using pc inks and the new profile that i just created and we'll try to kill the reflections I was going to put them on the um, board here, but that will require me to pause too long and, and uh, create a lot of cuts. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep this real. So here is a shot of a gorgeous sunset. Cloudy, stormy weather. You can see rain out there. And look at the sun just breaking through. And that water has that purplish tinge and pinkish and just lovely. It looks just like in the monitor. This is so strong and so beautifully depicted and i just can't get over it that this is actual you know third party inks come on folks i mean how can you expect third party inks to produce this kind of output it is nuts but you can do that with what the correct color managed workflow look at this gorgeous gorgeous um, still life not mine someone else did this it looks classical. It looks like a period painting. I mean, look at that. It is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know what kind of fruits those are. I think I've, I've eaten them before, but they are so delicate and so beautiful. And the tonality changes are so gradual. Absolutely no banding. Again, just gorgeous results. Why? Custom profile. Now, can we print some blues here? Of course we can. Check this out. Look at that. I mean, that is out of this world results. So, a little hint for you. If you can print a neutral black and white using a specific profile, you should be able to print beautiful colors. And they will be neutral as well. All right, this is kind of a ridiculous over the top super saturated image of some fall leaves again this is ridiculous but look what i was able to achieve okay again pc inks pro 100 custom profile semi-gloss from canon it's just ridiculous it's just way i mean this is oversaturated for me this is not the kind of print that i like to make i like a more subtle approach or maybe results but again this is just showing you what that ink set is capable of doing when you have the correct settings and the correct profile for it for that paper that is and lastly people complain about those facial tones look at this super super cute cute baby and look at those skin tones look at the detail on the furry part of the looks like a christmas hat I mean, this is almost pure white. We got a pure black down here somewhere, here as well, and everything in between. And let me tell you guys, these are not high resolution images. You don't download high resolution images from the internet for free. You get, you know, medium resolution. This one is about maybe 1900 pixels in one direction. That's it. Q image, folks. Q image does the magic. Why do you want to use Q image? Why, don't, why not just use anything else? Because the output sharpening, which is variable depending on the size of the print you are producing, is handled for you automatically. The algorithm is fabulous. The sharpening algorithms are fabulous. So again, I am a huge Q image you know, fanboy. Those of you who are Q image critics, that's fine. It's a, it's a bear to, to learn 
and it's a bear to get through the menus. Yes, it does not follow the same methodology that other editors and layout type uh, softwares use. But again, it's just something you have to learn, just another tool to learn. But the results are great. Relative colorimetric. I just remembered relative colorimetric for this type of print and perceptual for your landscapes. Maybe that sunset, maybe this, maybe this. No skin tones. Why? It's the way that it handles out of gamut colors. So we're not going to get into that right now. But anyway, that is it. Now I have one more surprise for you. And this week I'm going to go ahead and work on this. Precision Colors just sent me their new PC K3 HD Signature Edition inks for Epson printers. Ah, yes. They just don't sit down too long. They're always improving things. So here they are. Got a brand new set of empty refillables for my 2880. And I will go ahead and perform some OEM against this test. So it's going to be very similar to the Pro 10 test that I just did. Okay. And that should be coming pretty soon. I'm going to begin on that this week. And by maybe the beginning of the following week, I'll have everything done. And we'll put it up on the uh, easel here for you guys to look at. Now, don't forget this Saturday, we're back to doing the live cast or live stream, whatever you want to call it, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Got a lot to talk about. And again, got any questions you want to ask me? Be ready with your questions. Don't forget, I am welcoming Super Chats. If you are able to spare two, three, four, five dollars, whatever you want to spare, and you have a really strong question that you want to answer, and this will save you money in the long run, please consider Super Chat. It's just one of the other avenues that YouTube gives us to earn some money for the channels because revenue this month and probably next month is going to be greatly reduced. I had about a 60% reduction in revenue from last month to this month. So we got to do something. Anyway, also the one-on-one -on -one phone consultations, I should say. Go to my website where I sell a few of my products and there you can book a session with me. A couple of people are interested and I think I actually solved one of their problems over the email and uh, maybe they will not. But anyway, uh, that's always available. I am here to do that for you. Again, we have to diversify. Don't forget the Amazon page. Anything you need from Amazon, if it's not already there or something else that you need, give me the link. I'll put it on and if you go ahead and order, I will get a cut, which will again help the channel. And this is my goal for this year. I need to diversify and increase our revenue so that we can get that Pro 2000. Put it over there on the floor. Now, an individual provided me with some excellent, excellent instructions on how to use the adjustment program on the 3880 to maybe revive it. And I'm going to try to do that also. And if I succeed, that'll be a huge achievement for me because I am not very good with this type of thing. All right, that is it. Enough of that. Please don't forget to always subscribe, tell everybody, share as much as you can, and like. And until the next time, which will be tomorrow. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be creating a prototype t-shirt for you guys to look at. And if anybody knows, before I go, one last thing. If anybody knows of a company that will produce t-shirts, like on commission, like, in other words, I send the file, they print it, and then you order from them, and I get a cut. Let me know, because I don't want to have to do heat transfers here. I would have to buy a heat press, and that's just too much money. So that is it for now. Thank you so much. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.